Om Sri Sai Ram, offering my humble pranams at the Divine Lotus Feet, Mother Sai. Today, I have been given a wonderful opportunity to introduce a person who is an epitome of service, who has been doing services for the past four decades and continue till date doing services for Swami. Shri Ajit Puppet, or Puppet, arts as sweetly called by Bhagwan, is an ardent devotee of Swami and a revered elder of our Sai family. He was drawn to the Divine Lotus Feet in August 1983, when Swami decided to pull the strings, and since then the Puppet Show has been on. Inspired by Swami's love and guidance, he was instrumental in bringing groups of devotees from UK to Puttaparthi in chartered flights and more than 7,000 devotees were blessed with Swami's divine darshan and interactions between 1990 and 2011. For more than a decade, UK devotees and youth led by Sri Ajit Puppet sir were blessed by Swami to participate in the annual Grama Seva in Puttaparthi along with Sai students. He has been actively involved in many service activities in the field of healthcare in UK and India over the past decade. He was inspired to start the Heart Well Bank in UK to cater to the requirements of Super Speciality Hospital at Puttaparthi and Whitefield. And this registered charity has provided over 7,000 heart valves to the needy patients all over the world till date. He runs a cancer hospital at Jabalpur, started General Hospital at Potapalli, West Godavari district, where more than 1.5 lakh patients have been served till date, and runs a modern, permanent, and free dental care clinic near Sri Satyasai Institute of Higher Medical Science, Potapalli where more than 3,000 patients are served till date. He has conducted thousands of eye operations at Sri Satyasai Eye Hospital at, in Surat, and also a huge number of heart operations at Sri Satyasai Heart Hospital in Rajkot, and the various medical camps organized in Puttaparthi. Sir was also instrumental in constructing a hostel for nursing college students at Sri Satya Science Institute of Higher Medical Science, Whitefield, in the year 2011. Puppet Sir was also recipient of Swami's special love and grace by accompanying Bhagwan to Kodakanal on seven occasions. Swami used to lovingly arrange for many puppet shows and blessed Sri Ajit Puppet with an opportunity to speak in his immediate divine presence on 67 occasions between 2000 to 2010 in Prashanti Mandir, Trai Brindavan, Sundaram at Chennai, and at Kodaikanal. So, we have been immensely blessed today to have Sir with us. And this session would be like, Sir will be presenting for a uh, uh, few, uh, 15 minutes or so for uh, his experiences. And later it will be taken over by Brother Siddharth Bhatt through an interactive session. Over to you, sir. Saram. Namaste Jnana Daine Namaste Satchidanande Namaste Satya Saini. My beloved Baba, my dear brothers and sisters, 
with the grace of Bhagavan Baba, with his authority and with his will, this evening, or maybe I must say afternoon, because in many people in joining us from United Kingdom and other places, I'm going to dwell upon certain very fundamental issues that we as a member of the humanity at present are facing. And also, there are an umpteen number of questions that are boggling us in our mind as to how one should lead the life in the changed circumstances. It was the morning time after the Darshan, Bhagawan had gone into the interview room and he had not called anybody for the interview. And uh, whenever Bhagawan used to go inside the interview room and interviews were not being held, I must be very honest to admit that I used to feel very happy because then I stood a very good chance to go inside myself. Swami used to open the door sometimes himself or he used to send a message to me through a boy who were very fortunate to serve him. That day, Swami called me and Baba took me straight away inside the inner room and he closed his eyes. And there was complete profound silence. I was looking at him. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes must have passed and Swami after a while opened his eyes and he said, Puppet, what are you looking at? I said, Swami, you. He said, Say something. So I said, Baba, I wanted to ask you one thing. That your teachings are very simple. Love all, serve all. Manav seva is Mahatav seva. I said, Baba, all your teachings, all your discourses are very simple. He smiled at me and he said, Puppet, God is very simple. That's why his teachings are also very simple. It is man who has become very complex for a variety of reasons. So brothers and sisters, we here we have an opportunity to have an overview of the simplest of the simple teachings of Bhagwan Baba. And at the end of the session, we must be able to find out the answers to many questions that are being raised in our monkey mind. And also ask ourselves as to why we are unable to practice what he has been teaching us and he still continues to teach us. It was year 1990 when I had come with a group of 36 people. Most of them were English people. Swami, the Divine Mother was encouraging us to ask many questions. I raised my hand like we do it in the school. Swami said, hey, Rowdy. Because that time my name was not Puppet. Swami used to call me Rowdy. I was christened as puppet only in Whitefield. I will come to that little later. So I raised my hand and I said, Baba, in the scripture it is said, Brahma Nandam Parama Sukhadam Kevalam Jnana Murtim Dandvatitam Gagani Sadrisham Tattva Masya Dilaksham Ekam Nityam Vimal Achalam Sarvada Sakshi Bhutam Sai Natham Triguna Raitam Sadguru Tvam Namami. I said, Baba, it says that you are not experiencing any pain or pleasure. You do not have any concept of happiness and unhappiness. Because you have become a drashta. Bhavatitam trigunarehitam sadguru pangamadi. You are only a witness, the universal witness, who has planned the entire drama and you are only observing it as a spectator. So when this man, Rowdy, when he goes through pain and pleasure, when he's suffering, when I'm in trouble, how do you expect me to ex expect to convince you or to make you realize that I'm going through something which is not desirable? So Swami smiled at me and he said that, Papa, uh, Rowdy, you want me to experience your pain and pleasure? I said, yes, Swami. Because unless and until you experience that, you will not be able to solve my problem. Mind you, this was the interview in 1990. We are now in 2020. So Swami said, Papa, Rowdy, listen very carefully. If you want me to experience your pain and pleasure, 
then become like me. Because oil will mix with oil. Oil will not mix with water. Unless and until you become the embodiment of purity, unity and divinity, I will not be able to experience what you are going through. So, here is a very beautiful analogy which Swami has given us. Are we prepared to become what He is? The question is, how do we do it? We were sitting in a morning session in Kodai Canal. We had breakfast in the morning with Swami. And Swami normally used to come and sit in the morning only for a while and then when he used to get the signal either from the All India President, Mr. V.C. Manasan, who was at that time in charge, or Mr. Ramani, who was the State President, that everything is ready outside. The devotees have already settled down and then Swami used to ask them to open the door and Swami used to go for Darshan. That day, Swami asked me, he's a puppet. What did you go do this morning? I, well, I got up around 3.30 in the morning and I did Suprabhatam and then around 5 o'clock I left. I used to go for a morning walk before the morning session because our instructions were that I should be with Swami latest by 7 o'clock in the morning because Swami used to come down at that time. And then we used to have breakfast with Swami. So, I said, Baba, I had gone for a walk. He said, when you were walking alone, what were you thinking about it? I said, Baba, I was thinking about Dakshineshwar, Bhagwan Ram Singh, Bhagwan Ram Krishna Paramahansa Deva and his direct disciples. So Swami said, Papa, you have been always talking about Swami Vivekananda many, many times in your puppet show. Do you realize that what kind of intensity Vivekananda had? The young Narayan had about his master. He used to walk all the way from Dharantara to Dakshineshwar. He needed money. He used to come only to see the master. It so happened that once master wanted to create a stay a drama because many of the other disciples in the household members who used to come there, they used to feel very jealous. Because master used to spend all his time with him. So master decided to stay a drama and he didn't speak to Swami Vivekanan, young Naren, for nearly three months. And Swamiji still kept on coming, as usual. He used to come and sit there, Satsang used to go on and then afterwards he used to bow down to Swami and then go back. Not a word is there in exchange. So, one day, it so happened that people, those who are extremely jealous, they were all around in the audience, in, Swami, in Master's room. But when Ramakrishna Paramahansa Deva looked at Swami and asked him that, Narayan, don't you want to know that why I am not talking to you? And Swamiji just smiled and he said, Master Thakur, who gave you this idea that I come here to talk to you? The Master said, why do you come here? He said, because I love you, I come here to see you. I did not come here, neither I am coming here with this idea that you will give me some siksha or diksha. No, I come here because I love you. We go to Prashanti Nilayam. We have our own personal problems and agenda. Do we go there to get interview? Do we go there to get prasadam? Or do we go there simply because we love him? Anyway, we will come to that a little later. It was the evening time. The evening function in Kodai Canal was over. Um, after the bhajan, you know, after the arati, we came back to the Swami's lounge and we were waiting and sitting. Meanwhile, Swami had gone to the bedroom only for a while, and only just for a few minutes and came back and sat down. And then uh, Swami, I used to sit behind the students. There were not many students at that time. And the senior devotees, they were sitting on the side sofas. I was just sitting behind the students and Swami picked me up and he said, Hey, puppet, what is your qualification? So I said, uh, before that, Swami had, uh, had one or two words with the boys who were sitting right at the lotus feet. And one of the boys had said that he was doing his PhD and the other one was said that he was doing his MBA. So then Swami asked me this particular question as to, Puppet, what is your qualification? So I said, Baba, with due respect, you see, I am not as qualified as your students. 
because they have done their graduation, they have done their masters, they have, some of them have done their PhD, they have doctorate. Some of them are uh, now spending their, all their time and energy to become PhD. So I'm not that. I ran away from home at the age of 19, month, 19 years and two months. My parents were thinking that I was studying in Ferguson College in Pune and I was staying in the hostel, whereas actually I was doing my training in Indian Military Academy in Dehradun. I ran away. Nobody knew about it. I joined the army during the NCT camp and I was selected. Then I went for the senior uh, interview, selection board, and I got it selected and then I went to sit and joined the army. I was only 19 years and two months. I had not completed my, I was a dropout in worldly language. I didn't finish my graduation. I just left. So I said, Baba, I am not that qualified. Swami smiled at me and he said, Puppet, why don't you become PhD? So I said, Baba, at this age now, you expect me to go to the, I, I'm not even, I don't have a master's degree. I don't have any qualification. Where will I, who, which college or which university should I go and they say that I've got no specialization, I've got no knowledge. How can I become PhD? He said, Puppet, what is PhD? Tell me. I said, Baba, PhD is PhD. He said, P, pure hearted devotee. Your hearted devotee is PhD. You become pure. Your heart is pure. I will give you a certificate that you are a PhD. Huh? So when are you going to start your PhD? Tell me. Today? Tomorrow? Day after tomorrow? How long are you going to take? I said, it must be. And then Swami smiled at me and he said, you can do it here and now. Make a resolution that from this moment you are going to be a pure-hearted devotee. A devotee whose mind and heart is saturated only with pure love. A devotee who is full of compassion. A devotee who cannot even harm or hurt anybody even in his divine dreams. Why didn't you become PhD? Who is stopping you? Who is stopping you? You. You yourself. When I was um, in the Indian Military Academy, that reminds me, you see, uh, I, because there were, I didn't have a girlfriend, so I, my, there was no attention or distraction. Neither I was married, you see, I was too young. I was only 19 months, 19 years and few months. I did not have any other company or anybody. I didn't know anybody there because I was the only Gujarati cadet in the whole Indian Military Academy. Out of 1600 cadets, I was the only Guju. My, uh, instructor, as a matter of fact, asked me, you are a Guju? I said, yes, sir. He said, did you run away from home or you got kicked out? I said, I ran away from the home. He said, only two people come here. Either they get kicked out or they are mad or they, uh, they are crazy. So I was the only person, in, I was very good in all my subjects. But my problem was that because of my physical you know, structure was such at that time, I was very thin and lean and I was weak physically. I was underweight also. As a matter of fact, when I was went for my medical, I, my doctor told me that you are underweight. Anyway, so to cut the long story short, you see, I was lit. I used to miss the steps in the parade. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Then sometimes right, right. I used to miss it. So one day, we had one Sadaji, uh, Gurbut Singh. He was our parade commander and he came to me and he said, Hey, cadet. We used, to, we used to be called GC. GC means gentleman cadet. You are a gentleman first and then become cadet. So he called me up and he said, GC Puppet, breakfast me cornflakes mila? I said, Baba mila. Breakfast me bread mila? Mila. Breakfast me jam or butter mila? Mila. Breakfast me fruit mila? Mila. Sab kuch mila. To sala parade mein kadam kyo nahi milta hai? To parade mein kadam kyo nahi milta hai? Swami ka ashirwad mila? Mila. Swami ka prasad mila? Mila. Swami ka parivar mila? Mila. Ashirwadam prasadam? Sahi ka darshanam, sparshanam, sammashan mila? Mila. तो फिर साईं के साथ कदम क्यों नहीं मिला? 
साई के साथ कदम मिला के जिंदगी क्यों नहीं बिताया शादी साई के नक्शे कदम पर क्यों नहीं चला क्या मजबूरी है क्या दिक्कत है अगर जब सब कुछ मिला हुआ है दर्शनम पाप नाशनम स्पर्शनम कर्म विमोचनम संभाषणम शंकट नाशनम आशीर्वादम सर्व मंगल कारणम मम प्रसादम सर्वदोष शोषणम समस्त पाप खंडनम समस्त चित्त रंजनम समस्त लोक पोषणम साई अनुग्रह आत्मज्ञान प्रदायकम सब कुछ मिला फिर दिक्कत क्या है आई थिंक डोंट यू थिंक इट्स द टाइम टू ask this question to our own self and find out an answer within our own mind and heart why is it that i am not able to follow his teaching why is it that i am finding it very difficult to practice what he has taught me over the time he gave every drop of his blood to make no spiritual master i am telling you repeatedly no spiritual master in this universe has ever come and left this place having created such infrastructure which bhagwan satya sai baba has done it no master with due respect to shirdi baba baba was only hanging around in the masjid you know uh, in dwarka mai bhagwan ramkrishna paramo deva was living in a small room i am sure brother siddhartha has gone to dakshineshwar and bowed down there it's a very small room there is nothing five people ten people will sit there the room is full and he didn't travel much he went only to kamarpur only to his birthplace right no master has ever done it whereas he has he has done everything for us there is nothing which can be added the milk is already very sweet there is no need to look for the honey it's already there so brothers and sisters i have such vast treasure of experiences with swami and um, it is very difficult for me to relate a particular thing i had gone with a group you see and uh, this was that time bhagwan was supposed to be in rajivan davan so he had already warned me that uh, papa bring the group uh, but bring them to rajivan davan because i will be there so we were 18 boys we came there and the very first day we were told that we will not go for darshan i was a bit surprised swami said that you stay inside pray vandavan and until such time my bedroom light is not switched off you will sit there so those of us who are very familiar with pray vandavan we know that once you go inside the gate on the right hand side there is a very beautiful fountain and there is a beautiful statue of lord krishna and then there is a uh, room where it, it was kind of a recording room you see where brother nand kumar used to do the recording of swami's bhajans and also when swami used to give the divine discourse and you go further down there is a door which actually leads to the stage and swami used to normally come from that stage door so we were sitting around there and swami and we were discussing about only his vira and my man and all the experience that we had and we these are the boys you know who are actually vedam boys you see and there were two three boys who were not actually participating and learning vedam see because we used to do vedam classes in london so when we went inside the interview room and that day my Uh, wife my home minister was also there and my daughter was also there they are on they were in bombay when they came to know that we are with swami they came down to bangalore and actually when swami went for the morning darshan he told me that puppet call the boys call also your wife also i didn't know that she was also there in the darshan line because she had come the previous evening i said i was looking at him so he said what are you looking at me your mom, mom your home minister is sitting there call him so we all went there and amazing thing was that swami asked us to while the interview was going on and he was chatting with everybody suddenly he said eh hey, vedam karo start purushottam now purushottam we all were ready but not we were not perfect and i was not very confident about the three boys you know who were still going through so i just looked at swami and i said baba yeah, there is one small request he said bol start karo sha shuru karo in omkar and start purushottam i said baba pur suktam next time we will do it today let us do narayan suktam see you try to be funny you try to be clever you the one who is all knowing all hearing and all seeing so looking at my predicament he said he smiled at me and he said acha narayan suktam karega to pur suktam next time karega na aisa baba aapki dua se karega 
then you do one thing start narayan sutra brothers and sisters swami did purushottam narayan sutra with us right from the beginning until the end mind you it was by the time it was almost 11:30 in the morning and swami was supposed to go and attend a function and then swami told me that this afternoon let the boys sing the bhajan you do the aarti and have a puppet show and then uh, when are you going i said baba tonight we were supposed to catch the air india flight come to bombay and then catch the connecting flight so he said okay now actually we were given a small room for our practices those who are aware of trai vrindavan as soon as you enter into the gate there is a building there and um, there on the ground floor there used to be a branch office of western canteen you see and then upstairs there were few rooms so in one of the rooms we were actually practicing the bhajans it was swami's driver padmanabham sir when he, we actually swami had gone for the function and he came back and when he was actually entered into the main gate he stopped the car and he waited there for nearly 5 minutes listening to our practices that was going on and then in the sai ramesh hall when we went and sat down swami came in late and afterwards when the when the function was over the evening show was over after the aarti swami called me and he said puppet you think that i came little late he said no i said no baba you i am very pleased that you came and you blessed the boys he said i was waiting near the building and listening to your practices so i had heard all those bhajans that's why i came little late was there any need for him to tell me do we deserve that we just now realize it is kadam nahi milta hai brothers and sisters now i will take you back to parthi mr kamani who actually was blessed by swami the eldest one and that is why we have punishandra hall which is been named after him i was going back to london via bombay so swami had asked me the previous evening when are you going i said baba tomorrow fine then he went further down the veranda and he asked mr kamani the younger brother and he asked him tum bombay kabhi jata hai swami was talking to me in hindi when are you going back to bombay he said baba tomorrow morning i'll take the first flight and i will go back to bombay swami said fine it so happened that swami didn't call him either nor he will call me the morning session was over so we decided to stay back next day morning when i went there he was sitting near the water cooler you see there is a beautiful krishna statue there and we normally go and sit there you know wait for the people to come in and then allow us to uh, during those days chiranjeev rao was in charge of the shanti nilayam administration so when uh, until such time we used to get a green signal we can't go inside the veranda so i was sitting next to mr kamani and i was telling him that sir yesterday it was a divine play i think it was worthwhile that we had extra darshan and bhajan and prasadam so can i ask you from your experience shall i write a small note and when swami comes in the morning darshan you say can i give it to him he said for what so i said i will just say that baba we are living he gave me a very fantastic answer which i think we all of us must remember he said is baba human did baba forgot about it does he remind him does he need reminders why do you treat him like a human being he is not human he doesn't need a reminder why do you need to remind him that you are living he knows that he said never ever make this mistake this was sometimes in early 1992 93 you see this is the lesson that i learned from him i remember once my wife had decided to write a letter to swami so she wrote the letter and gave it to me and she said that you know lady said i may not get the chance to give you the letter to swami why don't you keep the letter with you and when swami comes you can kindly give it to him so when she gave it to me and i was folding the letter i found that there was some space left she had put her name and everything but there was still little space 
so i normally whenever i used to write in my own mood you know i used to write in letter to swami in hindi so i wrote it down few feelings of my own and then i said jai sai ram swami came in the veranda and uh, i was holding the letter in my hand and he said ah small man bringing big letter i said baba please so he took the letter in his hand and then he went to the he was reading the letter there and there only so he said why do you write such long letters to me so i said swami home minister has written the front page you see and at the back side also she has also written few things their lines but there was little bit of space there there also i wrote it. so he said from today onwards stop writing letters to me you simply if you want my decision then write only two chits yes and no and just do it like this and offer it to me i will pick up the chit and that is my answer is that clear to you why do we need to ask him why do we think that he is human why sometimes we make the mistake of reminding him why we because we are so anxious we want the things to happen the way we want think that it should the divine plan and the divine play is completely totally different i'll give you another beautiful example uh, it was morning uh, interview and um, after the interview swami normally used to stay inside for a while and then brother janki ram the respected sir we used to come and then ratnagar garu was very very young at that time and one or two trustees used to go inside the members of the the science trust and they used to have some you know swami used to finish it within 2 3 minutes and come and stand and then he used to walk down to during those days swami was in pune chandra hall uh, nx so then swami used to go while going swami looked at me and he said puppet 11:30 i said yes swami we will have lunch together so exactly at 11:25 i was there and i was waiting and uh, that time during those days there used to be a person known as girdar in swami's uh, residence he was serving uh, so he came and told me that sir swami is calling you now when i went inside from the outer reception there was nobody the from the inner reception i went inside and then there is a the dining hall you see and swami was actually the curtains were drawn so i was standing there only i was waiting for swami to come i waited for about 5 10 minutes and then i was getting a bit anxious i was looking at my watch which was given by him only i am also wearing the same watch so um i took the liberty of you know opening the little bit of curtain i somehow the mustered the courage and swami immediately looked at me and he said hey puppet come what are you doing standing outside so i went and stand out sat down i was sitting at the lotus feet and what i saw was amazing that i must share with you because many times we give letters to swami and then sometimes we wonder you know that whether baba will read this letter or not whether he will take action or not uh, i have written a letter in punjabi whether he knows punjabi or not i have written a letter in gujarati whether he will baba will but does one amma asked me in london one masi she said that ajit bhai i have written a letter in gujarati i hope swami knows gujarati huh? will he be able to read my handwriting or not i said amma give it to me anyway so what i saw was amazing that near the uh, swami's divine chair where he was sitting there was a plastic bucket sort of thing and what swami was doing that swami wherever he found the envelope he was opening the envelope and he was taking out the letter and throwing that empty envelope and he was reading the letter this went on for nearly 10 minutes and he had, i was completely looking at him and i was seeing this suddenly brother siddhar he started singing and he was singing in a language which i didn't understand and he sang for i think about few uh, one or two minutes you see he sang the complete song and then he looked at me and he said yeah what are you what are you thinking ha huh? it's a puppet in this letter amma has written a poem which she has composed i was singing that poem i gave the music amma has written with so much of love and bhava huh the reason why i am narrating this particular incident is that he is all knowing all hearing and all seeing 
there is no need to question in our monkey mind that i have written a letter in such and such language and whether bhagwan will have the time bhagwan actually is to i later on i realized it myself it is an education for me that when we give him the letter in the morning by the time he comes in the afternoon he has already disposed of all the letters he has actually answered to all those letters and he has gone through it physically also in the afternoon he takes a new set of letters from us i'll give another beautiful example about the letters we were coming as a group you know we were coming in a charter flight which was about 436 people the entire jumbo because ek earlier swami had given the instruction this time you come you bring jumbo so hundreds of letters were given to me we all in the flight had sorted out all the envelopes according to the size and made the bundles and because we didn't have any gift bag there was a plastic bag of tesco you know i had put all the letters in it and i took it in my room the idea was to offer it to swami whenever it was possible every day my home minister was reminding me that puppet you are going for baba darshan this that bag is lying there why did you give it to swami first day second day third day seven days passed i i said no whenever swami will call me for the interview that time i'll give it to him inside monkey mind reasoning mind logic mind you see i was calculating in terms of time also thinking that my innermost desire that must surface that he will call me inside the interview room ha huh? anyway that glorious moment did come he called me and my wife for the interview he wanted to give me the instructions about the group interview which he wanted to arrange it in the bhajan hall and then also sing bhajan and then swami wanted to give us discourse inside the mandir so everything was synchronized by him so when we went inside the interview room that bag was with me luckily that day i had carried it listening to my home minister so the bag was with me so i took it took the bag inside and swami looked at me and he said hey puppet huh you came from london why yeah very good what did you buy for me so i said i was speechless for a while he said you, you got a problem i said no swami i am asking you what did you do shopping for me i said baba i didn't do any shopping he said then what is this in that chat bag i said baba these are the letters which your dearest devotees and loving sons and daughters they have written letters to you he said when did you come here brother listen very carefully what did swami ask me when did you come here i said it's almost a week now he said for one week you are keeping my letters in your room ha huh? you got akal nahi hai kya you got no brain you should have given it to me on that very day the day you arrived it i should have taken action by the time that very day why did you keep this letter who gave you the authority to keep these letters with you and wait for 7 days and you give it to me now ha huh? papad if you would have given me i would have taken and sorted out all their problems one week before so you are the culprit cha buddhi ledu bhadu kal brothers and sisters we are worldly people <laughs> we have in train out train our in train is always full there is nothing in the out train we we have got a burning problem and we are tired so we will say okay we we'll do it tomorrow first thing tomorrow tomorrow never comes who has seen tomorrow what is tomorrow i remember we were sitting in the interview room we had an english couple they were not actually married but they were supposed to be married so i did the liberty to bring them together otherwise swami's instruction were very clear don't bring girlfriend boyfriend here this is not a meeting place this is not a sitting place either this is a sadhana place anyway so i had gone there so with this gentleman english uh, the boy is english and the girl is actually from iran so we were sitting in the interview room and swami asked them where are you going back so he said tomorrow he said tomorrow tum maro usko to more this is how he used to play with the word goes i think it is time um, that brother siddharth has got a list of some questions and um, let us brother siddharth is it okay right so we will go over to your question and we will pray to swami so that you get your doubts not resolved dissolved because if you look at the oxford dictionary you will find the the difference is tremendous there is no question of resolution with swami he doesn't resolve our issue he dissolves it it become non existent jai sai
thank you very much uh, sir for giving this kind of uh, very important context about how do we walk with swami uh, these are a lot of important lessons that we need to note uh, i hope i am audible enough uh, okay so, i think voice is slightly louder okay yeah actually i became speechless after listening to the wonderful experiences that you shared so anyway so i have a set of certain questions uh, this is purely on the behalf of all of us who are connected today and uh, you know hopefully we should uh, we should be able to get a lot of uh, answers understanding also so that when we uh, go back to our uh, respective uh, shell we should be able to have the dissolved all the queries that as sir said but uh, to take you back uh, to august 1983 uh, that is the time when you first came to bhagwan's uh, lotus feet uh, there are a lot of uh, devotees uh, currently uh, also on the group who would have come after 2011 after maha samadhi some of them wouldn't have uh, some of the most of them who came after 2011 wouldn't have seen swami in physically and uh, so we have a mixed people so most importantly when we come to swami uh, you know what comes uh, first is it faith or is it experience so maybe you can narrate uh, from your own uh, time when you came first time uh, to uh, in august 1983 what was what was your mindset when you approached bhagwan well before i tell you about my own mindset in 1983 i would uh, first of all deal with this particular subject you know whether faith comes first or experience comes first uh, we were actually in three session and uh, normally as it used to happen that uh, swami used to ask sometimes boys to sing one or two songs or there is a speaker who already been outlined or sometimes he used to give a surprise and say that okay so apart baat karo so that day bhagwan was in a very different mood and he came and he sat down and he said okay we are going to have a debate today okay right boys those who believe that love comes first come and sit on my left side get up so some of the boys got up and sat down on the left of swami's jula then swami said those who believe that faith comes first come and sit on my right side right so we all settled down i was sitting in the center so swami asked me that puppet you haven't decided where you want to sit i said no baba i will go and sit where people believe that faith comes first I said go and sit <laughs> the debate started boys is they were prepared some of them boys you know they probably already had the experiences of having three sessions and they are quite senior so each group they had decided that four of boys five boys were immediately among them they consulted meanwhile swami was reading one or two letters and he said that okay you are ready boys start the boy will get up and he will talk all about the significance of love and love is divine love mother's love sisters love brothers love friends love and highlighting the importance of love that love comes first without love life is dry and finished likewise boys on the faith side they used to get up and they also say like that in favor of faith the debate went on for quite some time and by the time you know it was time for uh, uh, swami to take aarti and then bless everybody with prasadam you know when we used to come out from the three main door um you always used to give anandam anandam reminds me of another incident but i will first finish with this but okay. anyway so swami said that okay faith side swami said debate is over now so who has won and what is the gospel truth so we all became very anxious that what is the final verdict you know it's like getting a judgment from the supreme universal commander chief justice who will dispense the final word swami said those who spoke about love is true they are right but the correct answer and there was complete silence the correct answer we thought for a moment i was thinking that he might say that it's not only the love but the divine love you see because love has got various facets there could be intellectual love there could be mental there could be emotional there could be physical swami said faith comes first 
Love actually originates, Brother Siddharth, from experience only. Swami gave a very beautiful example. A six month old baby or a one year old baby, when she is traveling with mother, does she ever give even by sign or by crying? Ask mother, have you taken my milk? Have you, take, have you taken my nappy? Have you taken my, if I do susu, then have you brought the new dress for me? No. She is simply either looking outside the window and the train is going fast, or she is in deep bliss. She never questions. Because she has faith in mother. That mother has already arranged everything because she is carrying a small basket which contains everything, much more than what she expected. So Swami said, when you come out of the womb of your mother, it is the faith that brings you out. The doctor has faith that the maternity will go well. But the pregnancy is now perfect. The faith comes first. Experience comes later. Experience comes when you open the eyes. Faith is blind. Swami, says, Swami once told me, it is better to have a blind friend than no faith. At least it will lead you sometimes in the right direction. Maybe once or twice you will fall, but then you will realize where you, where you have committed a mistake. So my answer, based on this particular incident which I have witnessed and I have participated in that, faith comes first. Experience comes a little later. If you have faith in your management, then your experience will be good. And you will get promotion also, because you will do well. Your faith in the master that yes, here is somebody who is, who is doing the right thing and ultimately is going to appreciate and then I'm going to get incremented and I'm going to become senior manager. But if you only are waiting for the experience, for all you know, one day you might get sacked. You understand my point? So, according to Swami, it is the faith that comes first. Love, experience, relationship, all comes later. I have faith in my mother. When I was crossing the road when I was young, as a toddler, two years, three years old, she was holding my hand. Hand, isn't it? And she knew whether it is green signal or red signal. But when I grow up at the age of 10, if I want, if she wants to hold my finger, I'm feeling a little shy. Because now I know the way myself. Because that is my experience now. That experience doesn't count. My mother still wants me to cross, hold her hand and take her. Because now the situation has changed. That time she was holding my hand. Now I am supposed to be holding her hand and take her. You see? That is why Swami once very beautifully said, those who walk with God, they always reach their destination. And with God, there is no failure. With God, there is no failure. So brothers, I think we should hold on to Swami with faith. What is faith? Swami asked me once in the interview room. Papa, what is the spelling of faith? I said, Baba, F-A-I-T-H. He said, F, be fearless. A, be aware. I, be intelligent. T, be truthful. H, be holy. Then you have faith. F-A-I-T-H. How beautifully he explained. Next question. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. In fact, the next question is related to uh, the faith. Uh, but in this current times, uh, the way we are uh, going through, uh, we have this problem of uh, you know, how do we sustain faith? Because today I'm not able to see Swami. Swami's physical absence is there. I'm not connected to him. And uh, I'm seeing problems everywhere. How do we sustain faith in these current times? And uh, a related question also is, what are the obstacles that we are not able to have a sustained faith in Swami? And are there any practices that you can suggest or maybe Swami has shared with you where we can implement in our lives? I'll give you my own example, see. I was sitting with Swami in the inner room and uh, next day I was going back to London. And uh, Swami was asking me, Papa, how is everything in London? How is everything in Sainkutir? I said, Baba, with your grace, everything is fine. 
And I said, Baba, I feel your presence 24 hours a day. So he just looked at me very seriously and he said, what did you say? I said, Baba, I feel your presence 24 hours a day. He said, why do you are, why you are thinking in terms of hours? Why do you say that you feel my presence 24 hours a day? Kadu kadu. Every second. Every fraction of second, you must feel it. The reason why in this today's situation, we are feeling that we are lost. We do not know what is going to be tomorrow. Things are looking very uncertain and gloomy because we are not connected every second. You see, there is a very beautiful sloka composed by Lord Shankara in praise of the Divine Mother and it says, Matsampata ki nahin, tatvagnam papagningek sama, evam nyatva sada devi, tatha yogyam tatha kun. If I believe, the free translation is that, oh, Goddess Divine, I have committed many, many sins, this, knowingly or unknowingly, forgive me, but you are the mother of the universe, the divine mother. Do as you please. Yatha yogyam tatha kuru. What you think is best. He has got, he has designed this, isn't it? Today, no scientist has ever specified it and said that Corona virus has come either from Chin or it is man-made or whether it was made in laboratory. They are all debating it, isn't it? Nobody has confirmed from where it has come, how long it is going to last. Nobody has been able to find out the vaccine it is going to work, is it not? So everything is uncertain. But the fact is that it is there. It is there. Who has done it? Nobody has designed it. From where did it come? From somewhere it has come. No? From somewhere it has come, from somewhere it is operating. It has got a design and one day eventually it will go away. Do I believe that? Or do I need a proof from scientists? Which is being based on the logic and the experiments which are being carried out in the lab. If I am connected every second that is with me, then where is the fear? Then where is the uncertainty? Then where is the dilemma? What is going to happen? What is going to happen to my future? Sensex is going down. Nifty is going down. What is going to happen to my uh, FD in uh, State Bank of India? Why should I worry? Did I bring it? When I was born, did I bring it? I came with empty hand. Swami also very beautifully once told me, Lena dena bande fir bhi anande. If you have not come with anything in your hand, Lena dena kuch nahi. Kuch leke aata. Show me one man, it will get come with the estate. Is he going to carry his uh, Microsoft with him? No. Everybody came with empty hand. Everybody is going to go back with empty hand. Then where is the question of worry? Swami told me once very clearly, he said, hurry, worry and curry. Avoid these three things. Puppet is always in hurry because he's always, he doesn't get up in time. He's always not doing his job in the right time. So he's always in hurry. Then he's always in worry because he has not done his job properly. And then curry, I told him not to eat too much curry because he will put on weight and then he will be unfit. But he still he enjoys his curry. Huh? So if you don't follow his instructions, if you are not connected every second, I remember that's one Swami told us in the uh, in prayer. In the session in Kodai, Swami said 100% faith. If you are 99.999%, I don't accept it. According to me, you have no faith. It is zero, big zero. And then he drew the figure zero in the air. He said, either it is there or it is not there. Either it is 100% or it is not there. You may say that I, oh, you know, I believe in Swami. You see, but sometimes he puts us in such difficult situation. You know, so my faith gets shaken, you know, and then I get anxious and I said, Baba, I hope you are listening. I hope, Baba, you are not forgotten me. I hope, Baba, uh, you read my letter. Che, che, che. Buddhi ledu. Swami says, when you sit on the horse, then you trust him, isn't it? Then he will take you to the spot. He will not make you fall. Hold the rain. You leave the rain, you will go in different direction. The mind is like that. So if we are focused only on him and feel his presence every second, yatha yogyam tatha kuru. Do, don't do it to please me. Don't do it to oblige me. Don't do it 
to favor me. Don't do it even to bless me. Okay. I don't need blessing of Swami. As a matter of fact, none of us need blessing of Swami. The fact that we are born as human beings, huh? that's what Lord Shankara said, Jantu naam nara janma durlabam. Manushatvam, mamukshatvam, mahapurusha saamshayam. The fact that we are born and we have lived with us, Avatar. Okay, you, as you said very rightly, that the youngsters, those who have come recently, after 2011, they have not seen Sin Swami. You don't have to see Swami. Who says who has not seen Swami? You see his photo, he is there, na? Is it a photo? Or is he he? Ask yourself. From where did the photo come? From him only, na? He gave a pose, na? Did he give a pose? And somebody clicked it. And you are worshipping it. So, he is there. Pukare prem se koi unange paon aata hai. Does he wear chapel to come for Shanghai? No, he comes running virtually. My devotees are waiting. If we have that kind of understanding and if you have connected every second, then Wi Fi is very strong. Then the signal is good. Huh? Then the voice and sound is everything is fine. I hope I've clarified this point. You see, the brothers and sisters. Let me make it very one thing very clear. Do not try to impose our demands on Swami. Do not do planning and tell him to fulfill those plans. They may be excellent plans. They must be holiest to the holy. Don't tell him to do that because we are making a fundamental mistake. Yatha yogyam tatha kuru. He knows what is best for me. He knows me in and out. He knows me more than my physical mother and my father. And if you are married, your wife even. He knows us much more than what we know about our own self. Huh? You don't require it to scan. There is no need for MRI. There is no need for CT scan. Are, he looks at you and you are scanned. He has gone, he has gone back 100 births, backward and forward. He knows exactly in the next birth where you are going to be born in Anandpur district and where in particular place you will not be in Puttaparthi, you will be in Bukapattam and you will be studying in Swami primary school. And then he will come and sit and sing at the same place and sing street bhajan and Sai Kulanto still will be there. He knows that. That's a master plan. Follow the master. Huh? Fight till the end. Then finish the game. If you don't want to finish it, he will finish in any case. <laughs> huh? You don't want to ask your permission. Does Koran ask us? Are you ready? Huh. Swami once told me. We were taking a photo session, you know, in the interview room. Swami said, death is the only person who doesn't say smile before taking you take photograph. He just clicks it. I think sir has just uh, logged off. Please bear with us uh, till he logs in back. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, sorry, there was uh, the, uh, the wire had gone off. You see. Yeah. So, connection. Let us get connected every second. You see, you see, I, Bhagwan is showing me the immediate example. 
connection was lost. Now it is connected. Let us not lose connection with Swami. Right. Next question. Absolutely. So that brings us to the next question. How do we connect this inner? How do we connect to Swami within? So that uh, we can enjoy his company 24 by 7. Sorry, not 24 by 7. Every second as you, as you said. How do we connect? Uh, you know, what are the practices? What should we be doing constantly? So that we can remain with him. You see, brothers Siddharth and brothers and sisters. As we started off this session with this saying that Swami is very simple. And so are his teachings. To remain connected with him, what we require is three things. Discipline, determination, and discrimination. Actually, Swami has given us the Ds, you know. When, we were, when I used to give talks about the ABCD, always be careful, always be cheerful, you see, like that. He is, but these three things are very, very important. First of all, if we are disciplined, physically, mentally, intellectually, emotionally, psychologically, financially, basic discipline. You look at Swami's life. He, nobody, he was not answerable to anybody, and yet he maintained complete discipline. We are talking about social distancing. Huh? Look at the way Swami was behaving himself in public life. Look at the way how disciplined he was. He knew it exactly. He, I remember Swami himself used to serve food on, on the dining table. He never allowed anybody to serve him. Because he knew this is the thing that he is going to eat and this much only. This quantity. You can't, you know... Uh, tempt him by saying that, no, no, Swami, this is very tasty, you know, have one, one, one more spoon. No. That's it. You must have seen, even in Kodai Kennel, those who have been there, he, he finishes his uh, lunch or dinner, whatever you call it, within less than two minutes. Actually, Swami's habit was that he will look down and he's focused on that. He's eating. Once he raises his head, that means he has finished. Then immediate brother Satyajit, or, uh, you know, Nitin, will bring the bowl and then he has washed his hand. That's it. Swami said, first thing, discipline. Discipline demands, what is that? Control of mind. Control of limbs. Control of thinking. Your mind is focused only on one thing, the job in your hand. If you allow it to go here, there and everywhere, then you will find that there will be difficulties. Then you will find that the connection is not true. If you have decided that tomorrow, it happens even for the physical sense. If you have decided that 7 o'clock in the morning I should be in gym or I should go for a morning walk, then do it. No matter which place you are and where you are. If you have decided that I'm going to do morning prayer, evening prayer and night prayer, I'll give a very beautiful example. We had, it was Friday afternoon, Friday evening in London. And uh, being a Friday, you see, and the weekend... In, looking forward to weekend, my home minister told me that today in the evening, we are not having dinner at home, we are going to Pizza Hut. So I said, okay, we'll go to Pizza Hut. So we ordered for the pizza, you know, we vegetarian. So immediately when the pizza was served, I closed my eyes half-heartedly because everybody was watching. I was thinking, I was sitting in a place where there was a lot, it was a weekend. So I closed my eyes, you know, half-heartedly and I hurriedly Said Brahma Arpanam Brahma Arvi Brahma Agno Brahma Naudam Brahma Yvete Naganda. I did Aham Vaishwana Ro Bhutva Annam Brahma Raso Vishnu Bhokta Devo Maheshwara. Finished. And then she said start. We started. Early in the morning, it was like a vision. It was not a dream. Swami came in my dream and he said, So puppet, how was the pizza? I said, wow, pizza was good. So he said, you did the food prayer, is it? I said, Baba, I did, did food prayer. Annam Brahma, Raso, Vishnu, Bhokta, Devo, Maheshwara. Huh? Nevedyam, Samarpayami, Atmanam, Samarpayami. He said, you did it only for yourself. Pizza hut was full. Na? There were many people who were, all tables were occupied, isn't it? Because of the weekend. There were very many people who did not pray. Because they are not aware of it as you are. You are very fortunate that I have taught you. And you remember it. And you say it. Of course, yesterday, what you did in the Pizza Hut was, you did it hurriedly and it was not, it was haphazard. You didn't do it properly the way it should be. He corrected me. And he said, 
now onwards whenever you pray say also another man mantra om sahana bhavatu sahano bhunaktu sa viryam karva vahi tejasvina vaditamastu ma vidvishavahe om shanti 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 pray for the peace for everybody else and this is a food prayer you are offering on behalf of everybody whether they are in canteen whether they are in home or whether they are in restaurant brother see we are talking about connection with swami we are thinking in terms of removing all the uncertainties in our life swami once told me that puppet when you see a person this was in kolkata kennel when you see, you are standing at the bus stop and somebody is going in a mercedes uh, 750 you see latest model do you feel jealous i said no baba i don't i said baba you have taught me so i am teaching uh, i am telling you can i he said yeah yeah tell me share it with everybody i said baba i don't get jealous because that man is going in mercedes car because of me only so swami said did you finance it i said no i was praying it for him loka samasta sukhino bhavantu loka samasta sukhino bhavantu samasta loka sukhino bhavantu it is because of my prayer he is traveling in a beautiful car i am very proud i am very happy my prayers have been answered now when you have that kind of understanding and philosophy and way of living brother said that then you will not have this kind of uncertainty let us take a final thing in life what is going to happen at the end of the day if today property is healthy and okay right suppose i become the victim of this virus and if i die what is going to happen is world going to stop only the number will change on the computer of the world health organization is it not who will say instead of 10 11 has gone cricket team is over what is going to happen if the death is certain then accept it as reality because one day eventually you have to go swami told me very beautifully what has to happen must happen what has to happen will happen what needs to be done must be done you cannot just sit back and think am i prepared for the death if tomorrow morning what is the guarantee that i tomorrow i will be alive tomorrow morning you might get a call from my home minister and say the property yesterday was very good but fine this morning here four o'clock he has passed away huh? and because nowadays there is no funeral and there is only 10 people are allowed so sorry we can't bring you and we you all people pray for him huh? it can happen i'm not saying it should happen but it can happen am i prepared for it if i'm not prepared for me for it that means i have lack faith because swami told me in my last interview on the 15th of january in 2011 that that puppet of course he was saying about his own self what has to happen will happen what needs to be done must be done what what needs to be done we'll come to that because in your last question you are asking about how we should behave how we should get connected that we have answered but how we should carry on what must be the modality and what must be the formality or what must be the mechanism which we must follow so that we are remaining connected with him and we are one day swami told me don't try to please me puppet don't try to please me you are not tansen you are not a musician you are not a rahman you are a little child who is learning how to walk make me proud don't fall and don't leave my hand how beautifully he explained don't try to please me अरे ब्रह्मानंदम परमानंदम नित्यानंदम अखंडानंदम आत्मानंदम अद्भुतानंदम आश्चर्यानंदम प्रेमानंदम योगानंदम तुरियानंदम सत्यानंदम नाउ सच्चिदानंदम हां व्हाट आर वी ट्राइंग टू इंप्रेस हिम विद आवर भजन विद आवर रागा विद आवर ताला हां विद आवर डायलॉग्स छे छे साधु का बुद्धि ले दूं हां हु आर वी ट्राइंग टू शो ऑफ ही नोस इनसाइड आउट इफ दैट इज द ब्यूटी ऑफ दिस अवतार पूर्ण अवतार परिपूर्ण अवतार देन वाई शुड आई द ओनली ऑप्शन आई हैव इज दैट आई मस्ट मेक हिम प्राउड वी विल कम टू दैट हाउ वी कैन मेक हिम प्राउड आई विल टेल यू शेल वी गो ऑन टू दैट क्वेश्चन नाउ सिंस वी आर ऑन दैट मोड एब्सोल्युटली सिद्धार्थ शेयर दोस क्वेश्चन विद मी एंड आई रिमेंबर दैट वन ऑफ द क्वेश्चन आई थिंक इट इज द सेवेंथ वन how do we behave in a manner in which you see we remain connected with him and we we feel how do we differentiate ourselves uh, when we call ourselves other than other than other people 
how do we how do we prove that we are satya sai baba's devotee and we are not something different or how we say how we try and prove it that how different we are other way around right Absolutely. is it the question yes what is what is our role what is the actual question is as sai devotees what is our primary role in life how should we be different than rest of the world right it reminds me of a very beautiful incident which happened with me i was going back to london after guru purnima so because i used to come with the groups and most of the time we were chartering planes either from emirate airways or from air india uh, total number of charter flights i brought from when i say i means puppet with a big zero uh, i came with thousands of people and there were 15 flights you can imagine even if you take a uh, figure of 300 people you are talking about 4500 people right anyway so everybody knew we me in air india so because my name was uh, as soon as my name used to come on the computer there used to be a code word cpi commercially important person so they used to always give me and upgrade me so i was in the business class i was after guru purnima i was thinking about what all things which i had observed and experienced and the final interview with swami and prasadam and everything and then uh, i fell asleep and then uh, due to the time difference you see they serve the meal the sister whom we call in commercial language air hostess the sister the beautiful girl came and told me that sir uh, i did not disturb you neither i asked you whether you are veg or non veg but i saw a beautiful ring of baba satya sai baba on your finger and i saw baba's picture so i thought that you must be vegetarian i said you are very right now this is what people think when they see a satya sai devotee they expect something out of us they expect a different pattern of living thinking and behavior they do not have to be convinced or they don't have to be asked that i am a non drinker that i don't smoke that i don't go in bad company that i don't go in visit the wrong places that i am a, i eat only vegetarian food you don't have to tell that it is taken for granted likewise when we know that satya sai baba who was worshiped by millions and billions of people where he had not visited all the places did baba come to london we made all the uh, preparations i even went and hired the place also for baba's stay i also took a engineer to make sure that when baba's uh, when baba goes on the first floor i arrange even a lift so that you know with the with the remote control you can operate it and baba doesn't have to climb in the countryside everything was done but he didn't come does he have to come does he have to come to sai kutir or to your place does he have to be told does he have to be nipnished no are you if you want to go and please then please your home minister you will have a nice career you know what i'm trying to tell you is that society and public at large expects a sai devotee to be a different person if that is their expectation then you will live up to their expectations no then don't behave in a manner whereby you are saying that help ever hurt never the problem is that i recited parokaray punnyaya papaya parpidinam help ever hurt never but i hurt everybody all the time knowingly and unknowingly and do not regret for it and then i said help ever hurt me i am hurting swami swami once told me there are three types of devotees brother and sister look listen this please mahavakya very carefully i think this will hit the nail on the head baba said there are three types of devotees one is who who does exactly what i say hmm? there is one type of devotee who does everything what i say there is another kind a different specimen from outer space who does not do anything what swami says he does what he wants to do what is mind tells him what is inner intuitive faculties tell him he uses his brain so there is a second kind of devotee baba says there is a third type of devotee puppet there is a third type of devotee who anticipates what i expect him to do and he does it without my say baba says that is real devotee look at the word look at the word of swami avatar one he anticipates what i expect from him 
and he does it without his saying and just tells him maunam sarvartha sadhanam silence is golden just imagine in a, in a ordinary civilian job you know if you are working under a uh, managing director of a company if you are a general manager and you, you know that boss wants a b c d thing to be done you instead of going at 9 o'clock in the morning you go there at 7 o'clock finish the work when he comes there all the files are there signed sealed and de delivered what he will do he will give you a big smile isn't it he may not say he may not call you and give you increment and say thanks but he will say ah thala bangaru ha ala bangaru 100% gold he then he will ask the sweeper what time did you come here and clean my office he said sir i came here at 7:15 office was already open who was here sir siddhar sir had come and he had finished the work and he had come he asked me to keep this file here make him proud by doing that he doesn't have to tell me that i should get him in the morning brahma muratam ha huh? he doesn't have to tell me i know it this is what he wants he expects from me i anticipate because when i get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and do ha huh? chitravati teer nivasa he is already sitting there and listening to me why should he tell me that i should be there at 4 o'clock for the afternoon session i should be there at quarter to 4 huh? does he have to tell me does he have to teach me that i should be a man of character and word ragukul rit sada chari ai prana jaye par vachan na jaye kaliyug rit aisi chali aai vachan jaye par pran na jaye vachan ko jala jaye jete jete jane ke sath jaane wale ko jaane do pran nahi jana chahiye half of the people those who are dying there out of the, swami once told me people he said there is a death threat going up and it will keep on going up you know why it is not the death which is fearing them they the fear of death is killing them at the moment the same thing is happening there are many people who are hiding and they are not going for the test or neither they want to go and confess it or get admitted because they know that they will not come back this is what is happening in uk at the moment people are scared to go to the hospital because they know that people the track track record is that out of 10 people only 3 people come back in uk and uk is smaller than maharashtra by the way and the population is less than that what i am trying to tell you is this brother when you have this kind of life publicly and privately and when you are alone particularly that you are being watched you are not being watched by cctv you are watched by sitt you know sony television constantly timeless limitless boundless he is watching you all the time when you are alone swami always tells me puppet it doesn't matter how you behave outside because there you can have shame and fame i want to find out what you do and think when you are alone first of all are you alone swami vivekananda always used to tell his direct disciples are you ever alone if you are alone then where is master then how do you say and proclaim to the world that is omniscient omnipotent and omnipresent how people say that baba has gone who said where is he gone where is he gone which is the place where he is gone how can he be there without us tell me how can krishna be with gopala and gopis if he is then he is not the real krishna ha huh? if he is not makhan chaur then he is not the same child the divine the yogeshwara ha huh? we must understand this philosophy of swami why should i require supervision swami once told me supervision you when you are super and you have a vision then you are supervision you are a supervisor you are wise and you are super then you are supervisor are we supervisor are we supervision we do not require brother this then people will think that satyasai baba trust devotees they are different their master is not there physically but they feel their presence every second their master is not there to guide them but they are always guided by his teaching their master is not there to protect them but they are always protected and they are fearless their master is not there to bless them but they always feel blessed let me very quickly we have little time isn't it because you said that 10 minutes extra will not make any difference okay very clearly i will say how we should behave there was a guru maharaj who had a small ashram 
not like Prashanti, but a very small kutia, and then he had about 10 devotees. There was a devotee who had clean shaven, and his hobby was that he always used to believe and behave. He was the ideal devotee, like Swami said. He anticipated what the master expected, and he was doing that. And in the evening, he used to go for a walk. Now, always you find where there is the right thing, there is always wrong, isn't it? Where there is right, there is left also. So there were some ruffians in that town who were making fun about his, you know, he had a shikha. You know shikha? The little one hanging around at the backside. That's the latest uh, hairstyle of uh, some Bollywood stars. So he was having that. And then these ruffians were standing around the corner, you see, and making a fun out of him. And it used to go on, but this people, Man used to go for a walk and then go back because Guru Maharaj then in the evening will have a evening satsang, you know, and then debate on philosophy words. So this gentleman, he was going every day, he was being heckled, he was being challenged. The stage came when one day they got all of him and said, because they, he was not acting, huh? he was not reacting. So they got crazy and they beat him up. So there was another man who was watching this. He was also the same village. He used to also go for a walk and he used to see this drama. And when then he saw the real thing, real action. When he saw that, he went to him. This man, by the time he was bleeding, he was lying on the roadside. And those ruffians there, because they knew that somebody is there, so they had run away. So this gentleman comes and says, that, Aren't you the devotee of Guru Maharaj? Huh? Anandji? He said, Yes, I am. He said, these boys, they were shouting at you, they were abusing you. You didn't do anything? He said, no. So he said, why? He said, they were not doing it to me. They were doing it to this body, and I'm not the body. But he said, you have got no vengeance against them? He said, no. He said, are you going to go and tell your... Uh, Guru Maharaj, today that you got hurt and you are you were bleeding? He said, no. He knows it. I do not have to go and tell him. So he said, but there is a smile on your face. Very faint one, but because of the pain you are, but you are still smiling. He said, sir, if you are not able to see in that smile the figure of my Guru Maharaj, then you will never become the devotee of my Guru Maharaj. My Guru Maharaj has trained me when you are in pain, think that you are not in pain. You are with me all the time. These are the tears of joy that my master has taught me. I could have, he said, it is not that I am weak. I've got muscle body. I'm very strong. I've got six abs, but I don't show it to anybody. It is meant for my Guru Seva and his mission and vision. When we are on that path of understanding, brother, then we will become that type of devotee who need not be told what he has to do. Then he anticipates what Swami likes and what he dislikes. Then he anticipates his teaching, what he has taught me until the last moment of his life and what he expects me to do. When I'm in public, when I'm alone, when I'm with family and more so when I'm, I feel that I'm lonely. Swamiji once told Swami Vekanam, you cannot be alone. Yes, sometimes you can be lonely. But God is always with you. If you are not able to perceive Him, then there is something wrong with your sadhana. Then intensify. Swami Brahmananda always used to say, in the beginning meditation is difficult. Once you get used to it, you cannot live without it. Then if you don't meditate, you will feel you know, restless within your own self. You feel that something is missing. If I don't get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I don't do Suprabhadam, I feel guilty. Not because I have displaced Swami. No, it doesn't matter to Swami at all. I have been dishonest to my own self. When we have that awareness, constant integrated awareness, so Swami used to say, eh? CIA, not the one which is in Washington, D.C., <laughs> the one which is within you. Washington DC is also in trouble. So brothers and sisters, let us become that type of devotee who anticipates the expectations of the master and does it 
when we start doing that then we will become indifferent to the world and people will think that you are different like this my sister the air hostess she didn't have to wake me up and ask are you vegetarian or non vegetarian she looked at baba's picture and said no we have 5 minutes more we were going for gram seva and we were running out of stocks so we got the message ruchi desai sent me a message i was with boys and swami had very fortunately and lovingly had given me assistance of three music college boys who could understand and speak fluently telugu so they are our translators satya prakash and two more boys they used to come with us in the same uh, you know jonga anyway so we were running out of stock and i received the message from uh, ruchi desai that uh, papa sir wait there i am sending it because it was in the uh, other uh, truck so we were waiting but meanwhile whatever stock that we had i distributed it so there was a i was going around myself and i normally i used to distribute either the dhoti or sari and boys used to distribute the prasadam and the laddu uh, because the mb had learned uh, telugu intamino uh, naru swami prasadam tiskondi chaala santosham so uh, there is a beautiful incident about that also i will come to that if you have time uh, my telugu with swami you know anyway uh, so i was going around and uh, i was giving swami sarees and because ruchi sent me the message we were waiting at a place so immediately that person who was in charge of that house our sister she went inside came back she was still holding the sari in her hand and she brought a mat you know broken one but look at her sense of hospitality you see that swami's boy they have come so she spread it out and said kucho uh, you know she said better so i asked her i said uh, sister do you understand hindi he said yeah i understand hindi and i also speak little bit of urdu then i realized that she was muslim so we sat down brother siddhar he said very careful see meaning this is how swami operates he wanted me to learn a lesson i narrated this in a puppet show also in front of swami and swami was in tears what happened was that when they actually when the stock came boys they were busy offloading it and then we were distributing it i was still sit standing there with that sister meanwhile the other boy came one of my group member came and gave me another 10 packet of 10 other sarees so that i can go around and give it to people those who have not received it so they were different different colors you know they were at least about seven different colors so i asked this sister i said sister aap se hindi mein baat karunga chalega na i hope you all understand hindi if you don't learn you are in india anyway so i said do you like this color she said phir se bolo speak say again i said sister i'm just asking you a simple question i was talking to her in hindi only i said do you like this color because here are there are 10 7 different colors so you can pick up the one you like it you know what she said he said bhai brother you are looking at the color my mind is focused on swami's prasadam when you get prasadam from your master then there is no question of choice then you don't exercise your choice you accept gracefully what he has given and cherish it and get nourishment out of that look at her perception my mind but after so many interviews focused on that color whether she likes it or not and I, my mind was focused on this aspect that i will please her by giving a different color she accepted it the way it was given to her and there was no question of any alternative and there was no question of her choice brother when we come to this understanding and become different than the rest of the world people will see it you don't have to announce it you don't have to have a rally you don't have to go and make advertisement you don't have to put it on facebook no there is no need for it people will see the difference that he here is somebody who is not from this world although he is in the world that's why sami always said na be in the world but don't allow the world to come inside be in the boat 
but don't allow the water to come inside the boat. I'm repeating the Autarwani, isn't it? Brothers and sisters. Yeah. I think uh, before you, before you, uh, you know, explain it further, I think that the most important point uh, we should not lose, I think, on the experience that you shared about Gram Seva, uh, which is actually my next question, but I think you already answered, that how do we surrender to Swami? I think, uh, as you said, you focus on Swami and his prasadam and don't have your likes and dislikes at all. Whatever he gives is best. I think the best example of surrender is what uh, you, know, you shared. I think so, you ask a very beautiful question. I'm very happy that you raised this question because this is also part of the uh, the, pa the panel of questions that you had prepared. Brother Siddharth, we were sitting at the lotus feet of Bhagwan in. Uh, we had come with a group, uh, the Gram Seva groups only, and uh, Swami actually came in the veranda and we had gone for the uh, seva. And then he asked me, "Where did you go for the Gram Seva?" Now there was a there is a village in Bukapattam uh, Mandal, Koval uh, Gutkal Pulli, and. Uh, I used to ask Sanjay Mahalingam, you see, that you please teach me the correct pronunciation. So in case Sami will ask me, then I should give him the correct name of the uh, village. Otherwise, he will say, I've been living here in Prashantipula 70 years, and you're telling me something which I have never heard. So I said, I don't want to get fired. So we had gone for the uh, seva, and we came back. And then uh, Swami came in the morning again, and we went for the seva again. Next day afternoon, Swami told me, Tomorrow, don't go for seva. I said, why, Baba? Have you made any mistake? We would like to go because it was supposed to be, next day was then the Purnahuti in Punachandra Hall. So it was supposed to be then Anandpur sisters will take over and they will, she will, they will distribute the prasadam to everybody in the ashram. So it was our last chance. But Swami told me, Papa, tomorrow morning, don't go for Gram Seva. Tomorrow morning, I'll come early. As soon as the boys will go for Gram Seva, uh, I will give you interview. So I, we were, I, boys were not able to hear everything. So when the evening bhajan and arti was over, I told the boys that tomorrow morning we are not going. So some, some of the boys, you know, they were very upset. They said, no, 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 Papa sir, you should have argued with Swami or you should have told him that, no, no, Swami, tomorrow is the last day, we must go. Blah, blah, blah. He said, no, no, sir. Or you should have suggested to Swami that Baba, give interview in the afternoon. I said, no, we are not going tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, we all will wear safari instead of this. You know, the t-shirt which I am wearing today, this is Gram Seva t-shirt only. I intentionally put it to, to make, to please you. <laughs> so, Siddharth, we, we got inside the interview room. Bhagavan was in, you know, he was over the moon, you see. So, he was saying, Papa, are you happy? I said, Papa, yes, happy. So, he again asked me, Papa, are you happy? I said, Baba, very happy. So he looked up, he took a hanky and he wiped his uh, lips and then he again asked me, he said, Papa, are you happy? I said, Baba, I'm very, very happy. He said, hey, you are changing statement every time. <laughs> huh? First you said happy, then you said very happy. Now you are saying very, very happy. Make up your mind first. Huh? Why are you changing your statement? He said, when you work with God, be steady. Don't keep on changing. Then the question came about the surrender. Now, coming back to your question. How do we surrender? And what does Swami explain and what did Swami say? Swami asked, you know, some of the boys who had come for the first time, because every time Swami used to tell me in briefing, that Papa, try and bring you boys so that they will get the experience. You see, because many of the boys coming from UK, they had never seen a village. They had never seen, they, they had seen signals. But the natural signal when the cow will come and stand in front of you, that's a natural signal, you know. Then they, then you know that you have to stop. <laughs> Until she moves, there's a green, there's no red, there's red light only. So, uh, Baba always used to encourage us to come with the new boys. Anyway, so Swami raised this question. Hey, what is surrender? Like you asked. So he said, Baba, Surrendering the fruits of our action at your lotus feet is surrender. He said, you are going to give a talk today? <laughs> then Swami asked him, are you going to give a talk on surrender today? Huh? What are you saying? Karmanyevadi 
Sankara say Mahafaleshu Kodachana. You are teaching me Gita or what? And Swami was in a great mood, you see. So he was playing with us. Then he asked another boy, ah, what is your definition of surrender? Yes, Swami, surrendering everything at your lotus feet, Kayana Vachana Manasa, body, mind, and soul. I surrender everything to you. Swami said, hmm. Have you done it? He asked another boy. Finally, he asked three, four boys, brothers and sisters, but Swami was not visibly happy. He took it very lightly. He was not satisfied. He did a fantastic thing. Siddhar, my humble request to you is share this with all the boys whenever you have some program. He said, surrender means I am sir and you are under. And he pointed at his lotus feet. That is surrender. Who gave up everything? Number one, formula. And second thing, I don't want to give anything to Ownership, then Swami mentioned to us. Owner, why you are not able to surrender? Four obstacles. First is ownership. This is mine. Second thing is knowership. I know it. You are not able to surrender. You want to prove your point. Swami said these are the language. These are the four weapons of Duryodhana. Ownership, knowership, Karna was useless. I did it. I killed Bhima. I took the Prana. I did it. I am the Yuvraj. I am the Maharaj. So ownership, knowership, doership, and donorship. Out of compassion, mercy, somehow there your heart melts. Although when you go outside the gate, you know, you bargain with a lady regarding the flower also, you regarding the vegetable also. And when you save five rupees, you think that you have done a great thing. Swami told us, you think that you have become next to Bill Gates, you know, you feel very rich that I have saved five rupees today. I bargained. And she, she gave it free and she gave me free dhanya also. So these are four enemies which obstructs your way to surrender. You surrender to Lord when you give up this. And then Swami said, what did Arjuna say? Puppet. What did Arjuna say after 18 days of war? On the 18th day, I mean the 18th chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita was being recited. What did he say finally? Karishye Vachanam Tava. I will do exactly what you say. If you say that Karna should be killed, he is stuck in the uh, mud, his uh, wheel of the chariot is stuck, and the rule says. The regulation says that when he is on the ground and when he is not having weapon, you can't kill him. Krishna says, go and kill him. Because he is the embodiment of adharma. Adharma must be killed. That is your dharma. Need to do that? Shikhandi was brought at the last moment to kill Vishwa Pitama. Was it done by Arjuna? No. It was the master stroke given by Lord Krishna Yogeshwara. Huh? Aswatthama, Narova Kunjarova. Huh? Dronacharya was killed also with this kind of philosophy. That when Draupadi was being robbed, when her reputation, her dignity was at stake, he kept quiet. He was not there only for the training. He was there to establish dharma. He kept quiet. So now he was, when, he, when Yudhishthira was asked, what did he say? Yes, Aswatthama elephant was killed. But he thought Aswatthama himself is killed. So he gave up his weapon and Arjun killed him. What I'm trying to tell you is this. That is surrender. Whether to judge whether that action is right or wrong. Swami once told me very beautifully and I think that it will be time for conclusion. Swami said action can be wrong. Brothers and sisters listen to this final Mahavakya. Action can be wrong. Action can be faulty. Action can be imperfect. But the intention cannot be. 
the intention cannot be the action can be adharmic the action can be totally out of the way and misunderstood by many but if the intention is right in the eyes of the lord when you have surrendered it is the right action are you with us so let us pray to bhagwan for having blessed us with this wonderful session i am very grateful to swami first of all uh, for giving us this chance to remind myself because whenever i am speaking swami one day asked me uh, this is also very beautiful uh, papa show was there in punachandra uh, in prashanti uh, nilayam after the talk was over swami actually the protocol was that whoever is given a talk he goes and sits in the front near the interview room so that when swami comes he can say something make some comments or give some instruction so swami came outside uh, the interview room and he was about to go to his divine residence he asked me papa who heard you who heard you so i said baba i think the pa system was working isn't it i asked swami i said baba the pa system was working isn't it so everybody must have heard it in sai kulwant hall so he again asked me siddha papa i am asking you again who heard you i said since the same thing i said baba everybody must have heard it he said papa your mouth is nearer to your own ears you heard it first this puppet show was arranged for your swadhyay swadhyay pravachanam na pramaditavyam swadhyayam na pramadah shiksha valli isn't it Swami said, "I arranged it for your benefit, not for their." Che, you heard it first, so go back and man, manam chintanam nididhyasam. Again, avatar vani. Huh? Go and think about what you have said, and think over it that it was meant for you. Whatever you said was not meant for the audience. If they have been benefited, it good luck to them. It was meant for you. see how beautifully explained to me last thing i'll tell you you know there will not be any end huh? because then you will be going tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock so anyway last thing one day there was a puppet show in sai kulwant hall and uh, i think i spoke for nearly nearly 1 hour 45 minutes in the in between actually i interrupted and i finished it and i said we are getting it's time for the aarti i even said that it is there in the video and swami i went to swami also i took the liberty of going to him and bow down swami asked me who asked you to stop you Who asked you to stop? Go and start from where you left. Go, start again. So I went on after doing all that thing. You see, when I was going back, you know, I met one sister. She said, "Our puppet show, today's puppet show was excellent." You know, then I met somebody else, and he said, "Oh, from my from Sai Kulwant Hall to W9 D7, it's about 10 minutes walk." You know, so but I took about 20 minutes because everybody I was stopping at all like a on my local train, you know, and everybody was praising me. So when I went to my room, Lakshmi, my man who is working with me lakshman he's been there with me for last now nearly more than 30 years so he was a little boy now his grandfather so he was not there so luckily i was alone so i sat down and i said all these people they were telling me that puppet show was very good and it was very fine and it was very nice it was very eloquent and then swami gave me called me again blah 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 and i was thinking that what am i doing huh i'm thinking about sai kulwant hall about rather than focusing my mind that it is aarti time it is now puja time and then i'm what i'm i'm drifting away from my own schedule so i said if i get a chance i'm going to ask sami how should i react when all these people are you know i'm listening you see because god has made us in such a way that if you don't want to see a thing you can close your eyes but can you close your ear no you cannot you put cotton inside but still you will hear it and you will get uncomfortable when you throw it away in any case you would like to listen so the amazing thing was the next day morning sami called me for interview so after giving me some briefing and the instructions i i was still sitting there and i said baba ek baat i want to ask you one thing i said baba yesterday you know after the talk when i was going back to my room i was stopped at by many people out of good faith and love for you and me and they were surprising me all the time so what should be my reaction swami gave me a fantastic answer which no financial 
controller or a chartered accountant will ever give you he said puppet if you accept credit then you will have to accept debit also if you accept credit then you will have to accept debit otherwise accounts will not be reconciled there will be audit objection pointing at him there will be audit objection don't accept it when somebody is praising you give full attention to him because otherwise he will be in this sense give full attention to what you are listening but inside in your mind put the tape recorder on sai ram sai ram sai ram sai ram sai ram siddhar think that i am listening to him well right now he is still listening and i am saying sai ram sai ram sai ram sai ram sai ram don't thank me don't put me in trouble because i don't want to have any audio objection if i accept credit then the time will come when i have to accept debit don't do it this is the way sign devotees must be different this is the way we have to prove that we are living with a living master who is merciful benevolent and yet very democratic he allows you to do what you want to do but the million dollar question is are you doing according to his anticipation his expectations if you are good luck if you are not then let us not fall into that category of devotees who do not want to do anything what swami says let us not be also in a category where we only do what he says no he doesn't expect that either buddhi le dum buddhi yogam dadatu me or krishna says in arjuna in simad bhagavad gita i think it is in uh, uh, sankhya yoga second chapter of simad bhagavad gita buddhi yogam dadatu me i'm giving you discrimination power use that find out who is your father who is your mother who is your senapati who is your guru and kill them you are here to kill them not to give lectures and become a good man man huh brothers and sisters jai sai ram if there are any questions because brother said that if there is time i think uh, uh, my watch is still slow so we still have five minutes more so if there are any questions which anybody would like to ask most welcome not that i know it but i will pray to swami actually we have uh, almost uh, well past our planned time but uh, we will take just one question uh, which is i think extremely important for uh, many of us uh, how do we come out of our bad habits in fact this question has come directly from london how do we come out of our bad habits <coughs> yeah the person who is asking this question has not come with me in the group otherwise you would not have asked me you see when you follow the master you have habits follow normally on sunday morning you would like to have a, take it easy huh? but when you are in prashanti sunday monday everything is same isn't it swami comes during those days swami sometimes used to come at 6:30 in the morning i have seen that by quarter to 7 people have already gone inside the interview room i have seen that also but there is no sunday there is no on the monday there is nothing in at that time also came when swami used to come very late in the evening we used to sit and wait for him until 8:30 in the evening i remember one day swami by the time we gave him the aarti it was 9:30 in the night siddhar 9:30 my wife said very beautifully she said earlier we used to have afternoon darshan it became evening darshan now it has become night darshan because the concept of time waiting doesn't arise at all there are people who are sitting there from 4 o'clock in the afternoon isn't it but swami used to come at 6:30 7 o'clock we are waiting and we are singing bhajan so you are talking about habits all these habits which we have developed and which have allowed them to get into our system like we allow work we get exposed to corona and then we say we are not well of course you are not well testing must be done we allow the bad habits to get inside in our system and then we say that we have become part of the system that is why swami always used to say pray while you play play while you play eat while you eat sleep while you sleep are you eating no you are not eating you are eating also and you are talking on mobile also you are fixing the deal also while you are talking while eating 
Then Swami says, eat while you eat. Sleep while you sleep. Are you sleeping? No, you are dreaming. You have already invested the money and you multiplied it and you want to reinvest it. Next morning, you want to find out who is the next uh, uh, finance uh, controller whom we should contact and invest the money. So we don't follow the basic rules and then the bad habits are bound to get inside our system. Uh, you can't blame Corona if you don't wear the mask and you go around in Dharavi and sit there and give a lecture for half an hour. Huh? You are bound to go positive, isn't it? Because there are people who are not intentionally giving it to you, but you are going there to take it. We have become victims of our own system, which we have inherited voluntarily and sometimes intentionally, because it suits us. You understand my point? When, you see, looking for chapel in uh, Prashanti Nelayam is a job, isn't it? Particularly if the ch little children are there and they are going back to the hostels. You have to wait there and then you go and look for it. By there, there is a rush. Uh, there is no social distancing there, right? Looking for that. But if you decide that it's the Pavitra Bhumi, it is the Punya Bhumi, and you go without chapel, you have no hassle. Then you can't say that I'm late. Then you can't say that I'm busy. Practical example. Swami said every, every particle of that earth in Prashanti Nilayam has been sanctified by him by, because he was all the walking with, all the time, isn't it? Going back to 1983, when we were there, there was no W9, there was no W7, there was no uh, south blocks, there was nothing. There were no toilets. Yeah. Snakes were waiting for you to welcome you. So we have allowed ourselves to become the victim. So it is not that we have to make an effort to cultivate good efforts. When the bad will go away, good will automatically will get inside because the vacuum has to be filled. That's the scientific law, isn't it? Nothing is empty. So best thing is, we must, that's why, let's go back to the initial thing, Siddhan. Discipline. Have we discipline our routine? Have you fixed up that we will take only two chapati, no matter what vegetable is cooked? That is my quota. That's it. I do not want to burden my digestive system. I will get up at 5 o'clock in the morning where the rest of the people, if they are sleeping, I will not disturb them, but I will follow my regulation. Nobody has told me. No doctor has prescribed it, but I will do it because that pleases my master. He expects me because in the morning, the lines are free and the lines are free. <laughs> and Wi-Fi is clear. Have I answered your questions? I hope I have done the justice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Actually, we have we have almost well well past the time. So we'll conclude with there are many many questions. In fact, but quite a few are related to the same uh, question of surrender and faith and all those. But I think more or less you have answered in different ways. So uh, apologies to all who whom, whose question we will not be able to take specifically. But uh, uh, Puppet Sir has given sixty seven talks uh, in Divine Presence. At most of them are on YouTube. If you get a chance, you should listen. And a lot of questions could be answered there as well. Uh, but to come to the conclusion of this uh, wonderful satsang, uh, I think there are more 18 messages. I think one of the brothers has actually given the uh, entire uh, you know, list of messages that you shared today. Roughly 18 messages. But the most, uh, some of the most important ones we should as a takeaway before we conclude is uh, faith comes first before experience. And uh, also, we should have a clear focus on Bhagavan. Always, irrespective, especially this is important, as you said, sir, that uh, in the current times, it's a world which is represented by Corona and there is God on the other side. If you focus on the world, we'll have a problem. If you focus on God all the time, then we will disturbances because of Corona or any of such kind of illnesses. So that's the second important takeaway for all of us that we take today. Uh, second also is important if we take credit then there is definitely we to take debit as well so absolutely we should uh, be very careful about whenever somebody appreciates or applauds us i think the best is just pass it on to bhagwan and say it is because of you and we are just your instruments and nothing more than that so that's another important message that we take home today and uh, there are three types of devotees as you mentioned very clearly and the third one is the most important when we anticipate what Bhagwan expects from us is the, is the best devotee. And for that, uh, we have to be all the time in with Bhagwan, uh, not just 24 by 7, but every second, every moment of our lives, which will itself sanctify thought, word, and deed in, in completeness. 
so and that is ultimately the surrender accepting everything by his will whether it is good bad ugly we are nobody to justify what is good bad ugly but whatever he gives and then that that people that you gave about gram seva you focus on the prasadam bhagwan's prasadam and you don't have to worry about your likes and dislikes is because whatever it gives is very very good for us see if the corona comes it's good for us if it doesn't come went uh, you know kind of uh, to share these experiences and share these messages which are extremely important in today's times so uh, hope i was audible and uh, with this uh, i think we should close the session with uh, samasta loka and offer this entire session to bhagwan sai ram samasta loka sukhino bhavantu समस्त लोका सुखिनो भवन्तु समस्त लोका सुखिनो भवन्तु ओ शांति 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 हे जय बोलो भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा जी की